All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get up your first mailing campaign inside of Pebble. There's a couple things you'll need to have. You'll need to have your list of properties, and that needs to be in a CSV file, and also the actual letter uh, template. Now, we've got some templates inside of our uh, template library already, which you can use, or you can copy and paste your own letter and bring it into Pebble. So the first thing we're going to do is log into Pebble, and then we're going to head over to Campaigns and click Add Campaign. We're just going to give this a title for this campaign. A lot of people will use the uh, county name and the date, so I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest, including the template that I'm going to actually use, uh, the mailing type, the print type, and if it's double-sided, and how many I'm going to send a day. All right, so you can see here that I've named my campaign. I am going to use my blind offer template, and you can always change that template at any time. I'm gonna use first class mailing, black and white, and it's going to be double-sided, and the daily send count here, which I've set at 30. I'll go ahead and create the campaign. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and choose my county, and then I'm gonna upload that CSV file. All right, so you can see here I have my list, which I've named it priced T10. This has come from data tree. Now you can use any sort of data, uh, whether it's from the county or from other services like Agent Pro 247. It doesn't matter, and it doesn't need to be in any specific orders. Um, as long as the information sits in there, we'll go to the next step and actually match up the data uh, columns to our what we call placeholders. So I'll go ahead and hit Upload. Now in this screen, we're going to match up, like I said, the column headers over to our placeholders. It will then import the information that we actually match up, and the fields are actually used inside the property pages, so you can always look up the information or add that information later down the road. As well, these can be placeholders that show up inside of your documents. So for example, we can use a placeholder that says APN, so then it will pull the properties APN onto that document. So this part is vital and is a step you must do. Uh, the required fields are the ones with the red asterisks. Now, because I've used uh, a list from Data Tree, I can actually select the provider and choose Data Tree here. Uh, we've got uh, Agent Pro, and then if you don't use either of those services, you'll just manually select the uh, column header that matches up with this placeholder. Now, you can always add more placeholder as well inside of here, and that's another video which we cover inside of our knowledge base as well as inside of our success guide. Now, one of the columns that does not come preset with uh, data trees list is the offer price. I had to manually go ahead and create my offers in there. So I do have a column which um, you will want to find. All right, so I found my offer column. It's right here. And you can see everything in the bracket is the example data that is pulling from the first row. All right, I don't have these other informations. You can always add more fields later down the road as well. I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to hit import list. Now, as it's importing, it's going to do a live scan. It's going to look for any properties with the missing uh, required fields. And I do know that this list is actually missing two addresses. So I don't have it, and I'm OK to move forward without it. You can see row 75, row 214, I am missing some of the address information. It wouldn't be able to send that mailer out. That's OK. I'm going to go ahead and hit View Campaign. All right, you can see here all 397 mailers are ready to go. We've assigned a unique code for that property. You can see here on the left side the template that it's using, the daily send count, and the print type, as well as the mail type. Now, this can be edited at any time. You can always activate this at any time as well. So if I decide I want to activate this campaign, I'll just hit activate. And what it's going to do is going to generate a live proof of that first row of my list. I'm going to be able to see that here. And once I'm good with that, and I've had a good read through this, I'll go ahead and check the box. I verify that this sample mailing is correct, so on and so forth. Once I check this, I can then hit the activate now button. Now, the mailing does not send immediately. It actually sends 2 a.m. UTC, that's 7 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Central, and 10 p.m. Eastern. Depending on daylight savings, obviously, it can, so it can be off by an hour. Now, as it works through your list and sends out 30 a day, it will send out tonight, so it's still noon here. It should go out tonight. It will send out 30. If there is an error, you will be seeing an error red bar here. You will not be charged that error. Actually, it will actually say failed. I apologize for that. It will actually say failed that it did not send, and you will not get charged for that. 
Now, billing for your milling happens every time you hit around the $250 threshold or at the end of the billing period. Whichever comes first, you will be then billed for your milling. You can find your billing for your milling inside of your settings page. One other last thing I wanted to let you know is, let's say you didn't want to actually activate the entire campaign or you had it activated, but you know somewhere down the row here that you want to send it immediately today. Let's say I knew that um, I knew something about them about or about that property that they need the offer today. So what I'll do is I'll hit preview and send and it's actually going to allow me to send this one individual mail. Once that's sent, you'll see that that says sent or failed. So either or. And that's how you get up your first mailing campaign inside of REI Pebble.